as I've been walking in the garden, I just had a, a wave of nostalgia because I could smell wild garlic growing. Uh, I'm sure you've noticed sometimes that, that uh, certain smells seem to uh, evoke particular memories. Uh, now, fortunately, uh, my memory uh, uh, it was a very happy one. <clears throat> I wonder how many different kinds of feelings you may have had just in just in one day, never mind one week. Anger, anxiety, joy maybe, contentment, peace. Have you felt bewildered, confused, hopeful or even frightened or terrified. Well, in the passage today, the disciples have just been through the most uh, horrifying weekend uh, that, uh, that Good Friday of, of Jesus being uh, tortured and, and crucified uh, and dying on the cross, uh, a very shameful death of a common criminal that he didn't deserve. Uh, and now, Mary Magdalene's saying that she's seen Jesus, that he's spoken to her in the garden. And in the passage, we read uh, that two disciples, uh, Cleopas and uh, a companion, uh, have, have just got back from a village called Emmaus, and they've rushed in very excitedly, saying uh, that we have seen the Lord as well. Uh, and in the, that moment, Jesus appears in the room. And so this wave of emotions, <clears throat> this roller coaster, if you like, that they, they, they just don't know what to think. Many of them think uh, that they are seeing a ghost or an apparition. And uh, clearly they are quite frightened. Uh, really tries to uh, soothe them and, and to calm them down and to help them with their doubts and their fears. Uh, and at one point we read that he asks for a piece of fish to eat uh, and he sits and eats it with them. That's a great way of showing that he is real because who ever heard of a ghost eating fish? And then Jesus talks to them and he goes into the scriptures, uh, what we would now call the Old Testament, uh, possibly uh, many of the verses that we call the suffering servant passage in Isaiah 53, uh, also some in the, in, in the Psalms and other parts of the Old Testament. And he, he teaches them, he shows them why it was that the Christ, the Messiah, had to suffer uh, and why he had to go through these things uh, and the disciples have been so confused but his teachings uh, just bring them so much peace because they begin to understand how God's purpose and God's plan has all worked out. Now the word that Jesus used for repentance uh, has a slightly different meaning to the way we normally think of it because it actually means that if you're walking in a particular direction you would turn around and walk in a completely different direction. Jesus talks about repentance as being um, a way of <clears throat> willfully deciding to change the direction that we're going. Perhaps our behaviour perhaps what we're living for, um, <clears throat> perhaps the way in, in which we realise that God is calling us uh, to surrender our lives to Christ. Once you've tasted uh, that repentance and forgiveness, which is God's gift, it comes naturally uh, to want to share it, if you like, with other people. Uh, and Jesus says to them that they are his witnesses. These disciples are his witnesses because they've witnessed that he was dead and that he is now alive. And Jesus says to them that they will start to uh, proclaim this good news 
of faith and forgiveness beginning in Jerusalem and going out to all the nations. So I'm standing now on a bare allotment. Uh, there's nothing growing in here at the moment. Uh, everything's been dug over and uh, waiting to be planted. And uh, we can feel a bit like that sometimes as if we, we've been in a season where we haven't been very productive. I think the disciples uh, were feeling very uh, bare and barren in their hearts. Everything that they'd worked for at Jesus's ministry um, seemed to have gone wrong because he'd ended up uh, being crucified and that was the last thing that they expected. So they were feeling very, very confused. In the song that we just sang, it said, when our hearts are wintry, grieving and in pain, your touch can bring us back to life again. And so Jesus coming among them, saying, peace be with you, showing them his hands and his feet uh, and eating with them and telling them to touch him. That was just what they needed uh, to reassure them that Jesus truly was risen from the dead and that life would never be the same again. Shall we finish with a prayer? Loving Lord Jesus, for the way you soothe us and calm us from our troubles, for the way you fill us with your peace and you help us to understand. Lord, we can't pretend to understand all the things that we've gone through. But we know that you are here with us, showing us your wounded hands and feet, showing us your wounded side uh, and touching us. And because of your touch, we know that you can bring our dead hearts back to life again. We thank you for your gift of repentance. We can truly turn around and walk in a completely different way with Jesus Christ beside us. We thank you that we are forgiven. We thank you that through the cross you heal us and you replenish our souls. Heal our hearts, heal our minds, heal our spirits as well as our bodies. Give us hope that we too might be witnesses to a wonderful work that you do in our lives. Amen.